Praise the Lord, my dear brothers and sisters. A warm welcome to one and all of you, and I greet you in the name of our loving Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. I strongly believe that you're doing well in your life, in your belief, in your faith. And if there are any unbelievers listening to me, we love you, and we 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 extended greetings to you also because Jesus loves you, and Jesus died for you, and He rose again for you, and He's waiting to hear from you. Um, I would say, why don't you give him a chance in your life? Read the Word of God, and uh, the bare minimal thing you could do is please continue to stay in connection, in touch with us, subscribe to our channel, and you will see lots of videos are being released. And this is not a religious forum. This is not something that we use to preach religion. And Jesus never introduced religion, and uh, came came to this world to kick off uh, religion as a concept. Sorry, he came to expose the love of the father especially towards gentiles who were not born of the israel origin or as an israelite right that was the assumption before jesus came that oh god the father belongs to us god means it belongs to us and us alone and uh, god you know kind of never said that in fact if you see in genesis 3:15 uh, he was uh, talking about his son who is going to be sent to this world Uh, to defeat the sin and free everyone, all mankind. Yeah, any unbeliever listening to me, can you say that you were manufactured by the demons or some robo? No, you were created by God in His image. Yeah, you were His child, and Jesus is your elder brother, and He loves you, whether you accept Him as your savior or not. But He loves you. All right. So believers in Christ too, right? You belong to some other principle, doctrine, or oh, that is. Uh, no Jesus, only Father Yahweh, and all that. Uh, of course, with the, without the name of Jesus, you don't even get access to the throne room of God. Then, who is teaching you all these things and giving you all sorts of ideas that no Jesus, no Holy Spirit, only Father? Some churches talks about the only Holy Spirit, 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 Spirit. No Jesus, no Father. Some uh, people talk only about Jesus, no Father, no Holy Spirit. Yeah, what is this? <laughs> It's called this blessed Trinity. John fourteen twenty three, right? They come and dwell in you. Blessed Trinity. It's a temple of God. Your body is a temple of God. Yeah. In other words, it's a wonderful church for God to exercise um, His love through you very freely in a liberalized mode. And you got to give Him the room. You welcome Him. Yes, He's going to be there in your life, and your life changes, beloved. That's exactly what we are. Preaching and teaching all through our sessions, right? Your life changes. You will never remain in that uh, kind of adultery, fornication, bondage, uh, smoking, alcohol, like drug addictions, depressions, distressions, bad moods, mood swings. Yeah, you don't need anti anti depression tablets anymore. And you need to uh, understand. It's not philosophy. It's not just a doctrine or a, a theology, right? It's 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 the book of life, and there are specific instructions which, uh, when followed, You know, changes your life. Your life is toppled. Your principles, your spiritual values, and spiritual doctrines are being revisited, and you will see the change in you. And you know what a pleasant experience it is. Um, only people who experience can testify. I am one of those. Yeah, I was never the same. I was not a born uh, disciple in Christ. I was not a born uh, Christian, and I was born in a Christian family. But first 18 years, I don't know where I was belonging. <laughs> You know, I was almost everywhere and doing everything against the gospel. Uh, what whatever had not been prescribed in the gospel, I ended up doing that. So, all right. Once again, a warm welcome. And uh, yes, um, we are in the business of um, looking at the, you know, the what to say, the uh, evolution and the genealogy of Christianity. Right? If you are a Christian. Um, Uh, you, you, you call it a religion for some reasons. I disagree with that. It's, it's a doctrine of living the life that pleases the Father in heaven, uh, which fulfills the divine will and plan that He has for you and me. And at the same time, you register your spot in the kingdom of heaven uh, because you are already on the path of righteousness. Yeah, um, you seek the kingdom of the Lord first, and His righteousness. The rest all shall be added to you. Therefore, you need not be worried much on these. Lines where I will go, will I make my way to paradise, and then after white throne judgment, will God consider me? You don't have to be worried because why you're already doing the right things, and that's called as having faith in God, 
and the trust and confidence which gets built up in you when you start doing things in God's way, just like Jesus walked, just like Paul the Apostle and all the disciples in Christ walked. Yeah. Otherwise, you know, what do what do God do with uh, an empty paradise and an empty kingdom of heaven? <laughs> yeah, is this the reason why Jesus was sent home? No. And our God is not someone who is sadistic in approach that he makes you fail and enjoys. Yeah, good, good, you failed. This is exactly what I want. No, this is this is the demonic and uh, this is the attitude of the devil, right? He's, he's, this, he's this sadist, he's a criminal, he's cruel, he's wicked, and uh, he's a murderer, and uh, he's a liar. Um, our God has nothing to do with any of these. Uh, therefore, you could definitely trust in God. And yeah, that's the reason we are preaching and teaching from the word of God through the scriptures to, to help you understand who you are. And uh, please, if you don't fall by these teachings, don't call yourself a Christian, right? You say that you are working to become a Christian and uh, don't be shameful in accepting that. I'm talking to the Christian, especially if the born again believers never say that, you know, I took water baptism, I, uh, water baptism and uh, uh, yeah, 30 years ago and you know, I walked out of this congregation and I'm a, uh, purified brother in Christ and all that while you have plenty of problems which you have not yet discovered and even after discovering you never made an effort to fix those yeah and that's exactly what we are trying to portray manifest and uh, bring that kind of visibility and awareness build that awareness in you and therefore you are no more walking in darkness you are no more blindfold you are no more that brother who live in deception or sister who live in that ignorance or being reluctant resisting the truth Many people resist the truth and that's devil's attitude. He doesn't like truth because he's a father of lies. Yeah. I know a person in my own family um, who was always that strong head. Huh? Nothing gets into that person's head. Whatever we may say, oh no, I read Bible once, that's enough. And now God permits a sickness and this guy is always with a Bible. <laughs> I don't want to say who he is and I'm not enjoying that, but I'm really happy for him that now, yes, he's seeking the Lord and uh, want to do something different. And I'm very, very sure that God is going to heal this person. Yeah. Likewise, you may have uh, an example in your own family or maybe you yourself uh, is that example. So, all right, good. Now, we had been talking from the book of 2 Corinthians, where chapter 6, verses 1 to 4, we are already done. I don't have time to recap. We're talking through this subject Um First of all, we are talking on the fifth principle, the foundational principles based on which Jesus built this congregation as a, as, as a Christianity, you may call and uh, or you may call it as, um, you know, building that new covenant standards in the minds of people. All people are important to him. Right. And uh, people miss on those principles. They go far into something else, either too much into the book of Revelation. Ah, oh, second coming is near, the time is ripen, harvest is plentiful, laborers are few. First of all, you identify you are that laborer or not. Maybe you belong to that other side, right? <laughs> you are part of the harvest where you are a sinner by yourself, but you have failed to identify that you are a sinner and you yourself need a lot of improvements and you are calling yourself, I am that laborer, minister of God, I am that evangelist, I am that missionary, I am that preacher, I am that teacher. Uh, there are plenty of people who are living in the dark state, blindfold state. Yes. Right. And why? Because they missed on the basics. Or they started very well on the basics, but on the way, on the fly, in the, you know, in the course of their spiritual journey, uh, they kind of got carried away, got too much into complacency. Bible is talking about complacency in one of the epistles. I remember, I forgot where exactly it is. It's talking about, it's, it's warning us. Bible is warning us not to be complacent um, in any of our, uh, spiritual deeds and always keep checking walk in diligence walk in light uh, walk in wisdom Ephesians chapter 5 that is not enough second John chapter 2 verse 2 uh, sorry cha chapter 2 the whole chapter uh, eight different checklists that are being prescribed uh, to every believer in Christ or disciple in Christ to keep on checking on a daily basis if possible right if you're a true child of God every circumstance you will keep checking this uh, you know, principles or doctrines or instructions or laws and commandments, whether you are violating or you're on the right side or not, you will never be careless. You will always be that brother and sister walking in diligence, walking in diligence. Watch and pray. Jesus exclaimed to John, Peter, James. Why? Because these guys were comfortably sleeping. <laughs> you know, many of our believers, we are all worked up and jump into the water baptism tank full of energy and ah, I'm water baptized and then go to bed. 
sleeping for 30 years having not read bible or even reading bible having not understood and even after reading bible have no sense or essence of the anointing gifts of the holy spirit now the fruit of the spirit is definitely not in them they are not the joyful uh, child of god they are not peaceful and the sister is always grumbling impatient intolerant always angry calling out curses and sledging and slandering and the words of your mouth you are not mindful you don't have any kindness or compassion no empathizing attitude always sympathizing and staying away from a far away distance ah huh? not a single penny comes out of your pocket but you have plenty in the bank balance is that your state Now who are you you are not a christian for sure you are not a good human being by the way <laughs> there are a lot of atheists and unbelievers who are far ahead of you in terms of humanity you know in christendom i have seen lot of people being inhuman inhuman in nature they were, in the course of the spiritual journey they also forgot humanity forget about spiritual deeds uh, set it aside for a moment are you a good human being being judged uh, by the word of god if you are a good human being obviously you are a good child of god and obviously you are spiritual enough it's tightly coupled right and only they select people only a christian believer okay i will give you money if you are not a believer in christ who said that where is it written in bible you got to help everyone especially your enemy enemies especially those that torture you and most of the enemies most of the people who torture you are non christians they do not understand the love of god but yeah through your attitude Matthew 5:43 to 48 through your attitude you learn to love your enemies and it's a well exposed Christ like mindset so all these are the principles which we are teaching and preaching all through the series and especially believers in Christ you know we miss on these principles and we are carried away we get too much into judgmental attitude we pass on judgment condemnation curses who are you you are the Christ seated on the judgment seat second corinthians 5:10 are you the hero of the judgment seat are you the uh, possessor of the judgment seat no give that room to jesus give that room to father revelation 20 verses 11 onwards there is a judgment day coming white throne judgment you you it's none of your business my business your business and my business is to love one another love your enemies love those who persecute you pray and bless those who torment you huh? you understand now this is what we are talking through from second corinthians 6 and we are on verse number 5 what are the deeds of your life and the bible entitles the deeds of your life as in with a different title marks of the ministry and i have clarified that ministry means not only um, you know going to the pulpit and preaching and teaching and pastors and all that no sorry that's that's definitely ministry i understand but the deeds of your life that are exposed and manifested every word of your mouth every reaction on your face yes and uh, your behavior uh, are, are you in a person who is in offense who is not gracious enough to forgive people huh? you're not patient with god and men all these things we touched no and in our previous session we talk about appreciating one another uh, in the midst of the losses in the midst of failures in the midst of nothing going well in your life but you don't fail to appreciate and encourage people in the midst of all your problems you are having going through distress moments in your life right and uh, you 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 definitely don't uh, slip on uh, slip away from appreciating the uh, children of god who are the children of god everyone your neighbor children of god all of them were made of god made through god god made them god create not made them created them right so we spoke from verse number 4 in all things we commend ourselves as ministers of god in much patience in the midst of tribulations in needs yeah and we spoke about in distresses right and uh, we are proceeding in from verse number 5 this must be the character of or a behavioral pattern of a believer in christ and that's when you clearly call yourself identify yourself as Uh, as a, as a as a disciple in christ and that is nothing but the mark of a christian right mark you are marked as a christian don't identify by that name or the dress code or bible some people carry that mini bible in their hand always ah they are super spiritual and i've 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 seen most of the people 9 out of 10 people moving around in in buses also they carry bible um, even to the toilets loo or without bible they just cannot tolerate the uh separation from the word of god and all that i have seen bunch of demons living in such 
hypocrites. You don't have to expose anything. Jesus never went across with the scrolls and saying, this is written by Jeremiah, this is written by Isaiah. <laughs> he was exposing through his character, behavior, the words of his mouth, reactions. Yes. And that's why people thronged on him, crowd, gathered, looking at this person, how loving. And, and at the same time, he was very powerful. Demons came trembling. What kind of man he is that even the nature obeys to him, to his voice. Yeah. And this is what God would like to see in you and me. How many of you believe that you and I can become like Jesus and become like God, perfect like him? Not more than God, not to overthrow God or overpower God. No, but like God. Why? Because we are created in his image and God pretty much instilled all of his character, his nature, his stature in us. It is we who keep on neglecting or ignoring or, um, you know, kind of um, not accepting with the, with, 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 with the belief and confidence. Matthew 5, 48, you can become perfect like God. John 14, 12, Jesus himself said, you can become like me and start doing things like I've done and more than I've done. And that's why you see Paul went to paradise and came back. Jesus never had that experience. Yeah. And wherever Paul went, you know, there were... Uh, you know, there were a lot of miracles that happened. Uh, some of the miracles were people, um, you know, or Peter, for example, when he passed by, the shadow of Peter fell on someone and they got healed. Something like that. Okay, anyway, let's get into this, the, uh, the concept of uh, appreciating others, being good to others, being kind to others in the midst of something that is not going well at all in your life. And in continuation of what we have read from verse 4, verse 5, in stripes, Stripes. Stripes means what? Sometimes you will be manhandled, you know. You will have to get, you will have to be beaten. So, I mean, you will have to go through certain um, manhandling process. For example, uh, Paul the Apostle is a classic example. Uh, Jesus definitely is the number one example. What he went through, my goodness, the brutal treatment. But I'll tell you what, nobody could touch Jesus until his time came from Garden of Gethsemane, even downwards only he was manhandled. But this Paul the Apostle, that's why I told you, he went miles ahead of Jesus and by all means. And Jesus would definitely be happy with that. And that's exactly what he wanted in us. Jesus was, you know, definitely tortured, bruised, manhandled, harassed, agreed. 40 times he, he was bitten. And this Paul the Apostle was bit five times more, 195 times. He gives a big, uh, um, I don't know, I don't remember by heart. He gives a big list. No, he was shipwrecked and um, uh, this and that. So many things. He, he, was in, he was in starving and he was in cold. And, uh, you know, really my heart breaks whenever I read that uh, passage. In, a, in one of the epistles, he writes the greetings, ending, ending that letter, saying that whenever you come, uh, please get me a cloak. Cloak means uh, like a blanket. Can you believe? Until that clock reaches him, he doesn't even know whether the letter will be reaching to that place or not because he was writing the letter in, from prison. And poor fellow, in the you know how the prison would be? What do you think? You will have that uh, granite and uh, he will have a good cushion bed and pillow given nothing. You know how that place is going to be? Or, or, or that place was? That, that's what his biography tells. You know, uh, At least the scribes have really discovered it used to be a place which is with like miry clay. There was there is no solid flooring and all that. And he will be chained. And there will be rats and cockroaches and lizards just breeding like that. There will be worms. There will be stench. No specific toilet or something built there. He has to urinate in the same place. And I do not know how he managed everything else. And there he sits and writes the letter. And he praises God. And he worships him. Can you believe this? I know a believer, uh, I forgot his name, in China, uh, a great believer in Christ. The guy was arrested because he preached Jesus. And you know where he was living for 30 years? He was let down in a septic tank where the human waste is going to be dumped. The guy lived there. What a wonderful brother. And who you are before him in stripes. 30 years in a septic tank. The person lived. <laughs> it's even mil trillion times worse than Paul's situation. I'm not saying Paul uh, was having a jolly good life or easy going life in dungeon. Huh? He, most of the time he can't even see light. He will be kept in dark. All sorts of tortures. 
and then they release him and then he goes and preach and again people if if, if he escapes from roman his own fellow brothers is stoning him and once they bit him so badly they thought he is dead which means what i think his spirit left him and god sent the spirit back probably god took the spirit why because at least people will stop beating him thinking that he is dead and then he sends back the spirit this is the way how i take it because they are not idiots to leave him like that they examined him properly the guy was literally dead and they left him and the spirit returns back and then uh, paul rises up and then he moves and does the ministry now don't catch me by my words this is my 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 uh, my way, way of uh, interpretation but may it be true may it be not true forget it uh, but god can fool these people and you know drive them out of the sight and save uh, paul uh, and but then imagine a man being beaten almost to death uh, and then he rises up and then he kind of washes his face or something like that and uh, there was full of dust and all that and he kind of uh, cleans up his cloth a little bit and then goes again and preaches wow why am i saying all of this my beloved brother my beloved sister uh, imagine that brother in the septic tank man yeah if there is any kind of drainage leak or something sewage problem we all of us go through a sewage problem right um, we did not jump from heaven i have gone through multiple sewage problem in my own home and i know in my neighbor's house what happened is um, uh, some problem in their septic tank uh, pipe or something all the dirt uh, you know the dirty garbage water started uh, coming in right inside their home i know how the family struggled what a pitiful condition oh my goodness they ended up uh, working on that for a month or something like that can i i can't even imagine this brother and the guy was released and then he comes out and writes a biography and um, and what a testimony before god now why am i saying all of this let me come to the point in the midst of your stripes yeah could be as worse as the paul as as our beloved paul's experience or uh, that beloved brother's experience who was let into the septic tank um, or maybe uh, it's nowhere close to that situation but it all depends i'm not i'm no one to judge that this is big or small this is bad or good right i'm not here to judge that but whatever may be your difficulty this evening or morning whichever place you are listening to me my brother my sister in the midst of that listen to these people's testimony they praise god paul and silas were wet like animals and you know what that night they praised god the chains were loosened uh, there was an earthquake the heaven responds wow god is not going to stay quiet when you are going to be beaten up when you are going to be harassed yeah when uh, when you are going through all sorts of hustles and difficulties in life your god the father is not going to uh, sign off and say that yeah spare me i have enough problems to tackle and i have no time for you or he is not going to say that i'm uh, your your time is gone and um, i had been really patient with you and all that sorry that's not my god's character if someone is explaining that is the character of the father he is that angry god and uh, yes yes there is a limit for his patience but then when you are getting bruised and tortured uh, and you are going to stand strong for the glory of god and in the name of jesus ha he is not going to sign off he is not going to give up sorry that's not the truth he is going to stand by your side yeah and he is not going to let go and he's going to help you yeah you see what an example is paul even to this day after 2000 years have passed passed by yeah and likewise how many brothers how many sisters how many martyrs uh, yeah they went through this kind of situation they were thrown into lions den and people were enjoying it's a game they throw uh, the christians into the lions den and people the roman folks will be enjoying under the leadership of, of that insane mad fellow nero uh, and uh, they they would never curse they praised god while the lions and uh, lions are coming and you know biting them and one lion coming and plucking off the hands another guy coming another lion coming and you know tearing the rib and they praise god until they are killed and they asked for god to forgive these people for they knew not and i will tell you what many romans might have definitely thought through this i'm sure some of the romans at least one roman would have accepted jesus for every christian that has been thrown why because that night they are not able to sleep why because they never heard such a thing and they never seen or witnessed such a thing person being killed and stephen praised the same in the midst of his stripes 
stripes can be trans you know equated to difficulty in any form and in any threshold that's a point yeah it could be in the form of sickness disease um, uh, some quarrels in the families and uh, troublesome children and uh, so many examples but do you appreciate god do you appreciate god in the midst of your problems it's not easy but you can do it that's why we are giving examples here right and that is kind of something which exemplifies the character of a christian and that is the mark of your ministry that is the mark as a christian let's continue in imprisonments i i already explained therefore i will skip but then i won't skip it completely sometimes in your life it's not only applicable to paul paul was imprisoned physically there yeah but there are spiritual imprisonments like what my debt is continuing brother my debt is never you know getting out of my hands wherever i go enemies are like opposing me i don't know i do always good i love people but i always see that my my imprisonment continues huh my family is starving we are taking only one meal a day we don't have money all torn clothes and all that always poverty stricken imprisonment i'll tell you what none of these are from god yeah because why you have not understood the power and authority given in the hands of a believer in christ in the name of jesus but sometimes god allows these imprisonments why to only bring that correction in you chastisement it's called as punishment you know to bring that correction in you but that's different but i'm talking about the believers who have given up who have almost been in that conclusive state for decades thinking ah oh, this is their life and they appreciate devil rather than appreciating the promises of god and claiming the promises in the name of jesus uh, you know they they have never been there and that is the state of many christians are these your deeds too hey uh, this is the way how you expose your quality as a christian your life as a christian and well done what would your neighbor think think about you tell me he carries bible always i hear praises sing songs and worship but what is this their life look at their torn clothes why because you have never believed on what you are singing and praising and reading from the word of god there is no exposition of your belief and faith completely missing nullified and this is the situation of few christians are you there or not yeah that's why i'm going in detail beloved you don't get these kind of teachings in the uh, synag sorry in the in the churches in the midst of some charismatics and all that maybe people did do that in bible studies but can you believe that we are on our 77th or 78th session uh, only talking about who should be a, who should be called a christian and how can you identify yourself as a christian or a believer in christ uh, and what gets you there yeah i'm i'm still not done i have a long way to go i told you right i meant up talking for 300 sessions i don't mind i have dedicated my life to explore the bible and teach and preach as how the holy spirit inspires me as not coming for free we put in lot of efforts it's only for your benefit i do not benefit anything and neither do the holy spirit or father in heaven you are the benefiter but yeah it it's very pleasing for god whenever you come to the side the come to the right side of the gospel yeah it really really pleases him he's very happy about your transformation <coughs> excuse me in tumults tumults may not be the right way of pronouncing but uh, you can call it as in the midst of your confusions i have always seen people not in steady state especially believers in christ ah oh, is this the voice of the holy spirit or voice of the devil oh, i dreamt a dream a lion was coming was it lion coming from heaven or from the pit of the hell oh, i heard this brother was uh, referring this scripture but uh, on the same situation when i went to that sister no she is uh, quoting a different verse which one should i believe why are you running between the brother and sister run to the throne room of god in the name of jesus and with all anointing the holy spirit is going to talk to your heart yeah, have that personal rapo you don't have that personal relationship rushing to the prayer room just like david rushes seven times in a day he prays just like daniel rushes through that prayer room three times in a day he prays opening up that windows all the way towards jerusalem and he stretches his hands towards heaven and he prays over his sisters and brothers who are still living in bondage in israel who are being taken as prisoners and captives what a what a piety right what a passion 
for his people and for God. And you know what? They are very busy people too. They are politicians too. They are dealing with government matters. Yeah. At the same time, they never compromise. Oh, and that's why you see them very steady people. Can you see any time Daniel failing in his responsibilities? And then he bites his tongue. Oh, sorry, I gave the wrong interpretation. Or Joseph is another classic example. Yeah. Uh, David, yes, a uh, couple of times he slipped off. But yeah, once it was his fault. Secondly, God imposed that fault in him. But he could have resisted. That's a different thing. Right. Otherwise, uh, Dave, Dave, what? Are there the only two things that you talk about, David? There are millions of achievements that David did. Why are you always focusing on the negativity? Hmm? Now, this David only slipped twice because why? David was such a versatile person. There is no one like David in the entire Bible. He was a warrior. He was the king. Uh, he was a married person. Uh, of course, he had multiple wives. I didn't know how to how, how he had time to manage these many wives in the midst of his busy schedule. <laughs> That's quite a thing. I will meet David and talk to him when I meet him in paradise. Uh, I, I'm really interested to know how it's, you want to know about time management. Please go and visit David's life. He was a, a music composer. He's a poet, not just a poet, a psalmist. Beautifully composes. And some of the tunes which he had composed are being sung today as it is. Yeah. He never went to any music college or something like that, right? And he was a prophet. Yeah, he is a strong worshipper in God. And what is that? Um, he's good at dancing too, right? He dances very well. Uh, not like how this bunch of half-cooked half -cooked vegetables, they, they dance on the pulpit. Not like that, right? With all reverence. And they quote David's name. They jump like demons and they say, David also jump like this. Do, do you witness? With all due respect, David danced. Forget it. I am a king, but I am nothing before God. I am a servant and I will worship him in truth and in spirit and in liberty. Ah. He was a man of wisdom, right? Because he has to make take many decisions when he is ruling his kingdom. Um, and he has to deal with his enemies. Yes. This is David. And you know what this David is? He was never in confused state. This is amazingly surprising for me. Yes. What a tremendous stability in his attitude and in his decisions and in the way how he dealt with his uh, life, whole life. Wow. And he was sick. Uh, a lot of uh, scribes are saying that, you know, he was diagnosed with bone cancer. That's why you will see a lot of bones. By bone, my bone melts and God healed my bones and flesh. And Psalm 6 to Psalm 32, in my tears when I prayed, God healed my sickness. He gave me the grace to overcome this and that. And he was in a sick bed uh, in his uh, late 50s. Uh, almost like 8-9 years, he was almost bedridden. Between 63 and 60, 70, he was almost bedridden. That's why this guy, Adonijah, I took too much of liberty. My sick father is almost bedridden. Forget it. Let me go and anoint myself as king. Yeah, that's not right. He should have gone to his father and asked him. But uh, Bathsheba took that place and she was very wise to approach the king. Okay. Um, now what I'm talking here, they were never in tumult. They were never in confusion. Why? Because if you are the child of God, if you are the born again believer in Christ, Yes, there are going to be scenarios, circumstances, situations that will lead you to confusion, but you will never fall as a prey to that confusion. And I will tell you what is the biggest problem in Christendom or among the Christians. You do not know how to make the right decision or take the right decision in the midst of your confusion. And you know what? Who brings confusion? Every confusion is not from God. I mean, no confusion is from God. That's a right statement. Every confusion is from the devil. Where the spirit is, there is liberty, there is freedom, there is clarity. Second Corinthians, what, 3.17, right? Yeah? You're all looking at me as if you have never heard this verse. You all know this, right? Where the spirit is, there is liberty. What does liberty mean? Freedom from every confusion, every confounding thought. Right? And uh, that, that is from God. That is the speciality of God and His presence. Huh? And you will never lead yourself into confusion or fall as a prey and uh, he is an expert in confusing people and uh, any Christian who is not with a stable mindset as it is described in um, James chapter 1 I remember reading James 1 6 I think right uh, but let him ask in faith with no doubting for he who doubts is like a wave of the sea driven and tossed by the wind double minded 
double minded uh, spirit right james 122 also talks about it but be the doers and no no james 48 48 i think right uh, yeah cleanse your hands you sinners and purify your hearts you double minded who are these double minded fellows who are neither here nor there they want uh, some of some liberty and they run between prophets prophetesses and that except the word of god and approaching god they will approach everyone and devil is very happy about it why because that is the best means for you to stay in the kind of unrest position and uh, live in confusion die in confusion and uh, go to hell finally yes because why you are encouraging the devil giving too much of room to the devil yeah you will never be a confused person if that is your state today this is not the mark of a christian beloved and i will tell you something we are talking about from the law of forgiveness perspective you will never receive forgiveness from god why because you had chosen to live in deception sorry your sins are not this is a sin for you to live in confusion is a sin according to the bible yes cursed are you the curses of the devil shall continue to linger to your life and nextly in labors right hard working in the midst of your hard working you will uh, uh, sometimes you will have to really toil yeah i have seen people yeah blessed are you if you don't have to toil and you work normally you are still paid high yeah? blessed are you beloved but that's when your attitude will be put to test how much you are giving to the poor uh, yeah what is your gratitude towards the those that are downtrodden but majority of uh, the people are in the hard working category and lot of tax money they have to pay and all. what a burden right but in the midst of that you never fail to appreciate god you never fail to appreciate your fellow brother you never fail to help others this is the mark of a christian are you there is that the deed of your life huh i'm just going little fast right in in i will visit two things and uh, with that we close i, I will continue from the next uh, session this is part 5 marks of the ministry or mark of a christian or the uh, deeds of a christian right what is the manifestation if you are a christian multiple ways to um, you know interpret it <coughs> excuse me in sleeplessness sleeplessness deep sleep spirit i have spoken about that in the group of the evil spirits that deceive the mankind there are eight or seven or eight episodes we did already um and that i spoke only about deep sleep spirit and that's a demon that will live inside some people um whom i know very well i don't know they they are able to sleep comfortably fine in in church and even at home and when they get that little time no immediately sleep will come the devil is reigning in such a brother's body binding him in that sleep not not, not blind, binding him in sleep but we here we are talking about sleeplessness and yeah having no sleep uh, despite of uh, working hard and uh, all that is a disease you are in depression there is some other problem even that is a demon that is a different demon not allowing you to sleep no you should be neither there or here yeah not into too much of sleeplessness not to in too much of sleep if too much of sleep it's deep sleep spirit too much of sleeplessness it's another spirit that is somehow troubling your mind when you do when you don't get sleep yeah when you are worried when you are fearful trembling fear somehow some people pick a topic to keep them always in that unrest situation um, i've seen multiple people you know they are experts in keeping always uh, you know keeping their mind always engaged in the things that are less least important <laughs> least important yes of course you got to be worried about your life after death yes things that are of above and you don't have to be worried but because why you are going to react and god is going to help you holy spirit helps you but then you are in sleeplessness for for all the right reasons yes that is the character of a christian what in fasting the next one is in fasting in fasting and prayer how many of you fast at least once or twice in a week yeah during the lent days you fast for few days and that's it the rest of the year you yeah let the next lent come is that your attitude then that is not the mark of a christian you got to fast and pray why because jesus himself prescribed something that certain spirits uh, can be will be leave you or can be driven out of your homes and driven out of your bodies not without fasting yeah he leaves behind a very very specific prescription and uh, 
Daniel was in fasting and prayer. That's when he got the revelation about the second coming and all that. He saw many, many secret things that God revealed to him. Fasting is really good. And uh, sometimes in the middle of your sleep, right, suddenly the sleep goes off. And you know who takes away that sleep? Holy Spirit. If you are soaked in God and in the word of God, and the demons have no entry there. So don't ever think, oh, this is the demonic thing, you know, and all that. No, Holy Spirit also can wake you. He tapped on the sides of Peter and said that, wake up, Peter. <laughs> like that he may tap on your side, my brother, my sister, wake up. Why? Because he wants you to pray. Pray in the middle of the night. It's nice. I enjoy doing that. Sometimes I'm not able to sleep. I just keep talking to God, lying down. No problem. Just lie down and keep praying. Talk to God from your heart. If your, if your wife is in deep sleep, don't scream hallelujah and wake her up, right? <laughs> That's not what is expected. Why am I alone sleep, uh, going through the sleeplessness? Yeah, <clears throat> that is a little sadistic in nature. All right. I just want to crack that little joke before we conclude. All right. Hope this was a useful session. And uh, these are the important things that you and I need to take a note as Christians, right? As believers in Christ and I'm telling you the truth, beloved. Those who shall ignore these kind of doctrines, <clears throat> they will continue to live their life in bondage. And they think that living their life in bondage is humility and that is the character of a Christian. They will discover that <clears throat> from the lake of fire that it was not the right doctrine. Too late for you. Why would you do that? Heavenly Father, we want to thank you for this wonderful time and opportunity. Today you spoke to us very, very clearly from the aspects of what it is being in stripes and imprisonment in uh, confusions in the midst of labor and sleeplessness and so many aspects you have taught us, Lord. Help us to practice these doctrines and help us to be the doers, not just the hearers. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God bless you. Please subscribe to our channel. Get access to all our playlists. Please do not miss on any sessions. That's why we ask you to subscribe. You get an automatic notification. Share it with your friends, relatives, near ones, dear ones, uh, whoever it may be. Uh, all that you are doing is basically spreading the word of God and you are the light to the world. And don't keep on nudging and emphasizing them. Leave, share share once and leave it there. And likewise, continue to remember me and, your, and our ministries and your personal prayers. Every day pray for me at least 10 seconds. That's all we are asking. And uh, if you have any prayer requests, do not contact us. Please contact God the Father and you have to dial his number. And what is the number? The Bible. <laughs> the Bible is the number and every chapter is having a specific dial number, right? And uh, yeah, it, it's quite interesting because you have numbers for every kind of problems and you got to just pick. It's like a directory. The word of God is a directory. You can pick this directory and refer to any problem, any circumstance, any incident. And talk to the Father. May God bless you. I will meet you soon in the next session.